right, thank you so much for staying with Daybreak. This is a session where we allow the young people in the political sphere to give their views on several issues that's happening around across the country. One of the biggest ones now is the budget. The, the Daily Nation is calling it a budget for the people. The Standard is calling it a safe exit budget. We'll find out from them what their thoughts are, and then we'll get into the political conversation as well. There's nomination headache going on. There's coalitions that are, there's cracks in certain coalitions as well. We'll find out from them what their views are. Let me introduce my guest one more time. Anul Maliba, spokesperson, DAPK, is here with us. And also the Dagoretti North Member of Parliament aspirant. Thank you for making time. We have Faith Lukosi, a lawyer, and also a senator aspirant for Nairobi. Asante Sana for making time. Newton Hamas is here, spokesperson, Democratic Party. Asante Sana for making time. And Omulo Jr., Director of Political Affairs, ANC Party, is also with us in studio. Thank you so much for making time. Let's start off with gentlemen and lady with the Daily Nation and also the standard. It's all about the budget. The Daily Nation says a budget for the people. Standard calls it a safe exit budget. And striking a delicate balance, National Treasury Cabinet Secretary Kuri Atani yesterday sought to ensure sustained economic revival while addressing the high cost of living, haunting many families and boosting social welfare spending. But with a 800 billion funding deficit, his 3.3 trillion budget only means more debt pain for the Kenyan taxpayer. That's on the Daily Nation. On the standard, they're saying Uru's parting short. Treasury CS tears clear of any major new taxation measures and promises to soften economic blows to ordinary Mwanainchi already reeling under high cost of living in an effort to give his boss a quiet exit. But the truth of his word remains hidden in the finance bill. Maliba, I'll start with you on this. What is your general overview of this 3.3 trillion shillings budget? Are we living beyond our means? After the breakdown, are you satisfied with what you see? Uh, first of all, I took time and just went through the, the popular version because the other one was a little bit big. So I looked at a number of the documents uh, uh, around the budget. I have not found an opportunity to look at the, the finance bill yet. Uh, the CS said he tabled it, but I have not seen a copy yet. But generally, the, the budget looks good. Um, not just a safe uh, budget, as uh, the standard says, but it's actually very much pro people. It's heavy on uh, uh, the social safety net. Uh, it's actually quite good on uh, on uh, uh, sparring the economy, uh, helping out on manufacturing. We've gone back. Uh, you can actually see that uh, we are back to a place where we have got uh, the economic recovery uh, uh, a platform actually brought in. So uh, generally, it's one of actually the best budgets that have actually been done by uh, by uh, by the Jubilee administration. But largely, I would like actually to point out a few things. You talked about uh, the deficit bit of it. The government ordinarily uh, goes out to get revenue in three streams. Uh, the first stream normally, when you talk about the taxation, generally within that particular net, there are three streams. First of all, the government uh, gets revenue or taxes you on income. You look at the pie uh, around, so income. Uh, the second stream is uh, on consumption. When you're consuming, the government gets there. And then the third bit where the government gets revenue or where ordinarily we will tax you is uh, on wealth. Of course, in Kenya, the uh, wealth tax is not very, is not very popular because we even struggle to pay rights. Uh, no one will accept to pay uh, uh, tax for, for inheritance, for example, if your parent left you anything else. So largely, our uh, the government revenue in this in a particular instance remains on two things, yeah. income and consumption. And uh, it's actually well balanced, the biggest actually being uh, income tax, uh, pay as you earn and the other uh, related. And then, of course, now you uh, find the other bits around consumption, things like VAT, excess duty, and the others. Those are actually the biggest pie when you look at it. And it's actually well worked out. I see a projection in, uh, uh, in revenue of about 2.2 or 4, if I'm not so wrong, on, uh, on revenue. Uh, the deficit, the gap of about 8, it's clearly stated on how we are going to get that. Yeah. So I see a well-balanced budget, okay. uh, but uh, what actually makes this budget very good is that uh, it's very, very much pro-people. Okay. Yeah. Lukosi, do you think this is a pro-people budget? Thank you so much, Trevor. I'm happy to be here. Uh, for me, I've also had time to go through the budget, and I feel that the budget is a, a pro-people, and uh, what the president has been focusing on is uh, reviving the economy, especially now that we are coming from a very tough economy, uh, pandemic period of COVID-19. And this has led to high cost of living. But uh, with the major focus areas that the budget has uh, 
allocated further uh, budget, such as the agricultural sector, which is the backbone of the economy, and uh, the local manufacturing sector, which is really going to create uh, jobs uh, for many people who have become jobless at this time. It is uh, applaudable, and uh, I believe that we are actually on the right track of reviving the economy. But now, the, uh, the biggest issue that we've been having is not even really about uh, revenue, but uh, the issue of uh, the, we have an appetite for borrowing. And this appetite for borrowing is really putting us into a deficit crisis, which I think needs to be looked into with the seriousness it deserves. Uh, also, another issue is about uh, the expenditure. Uh, there are a number of gaps that uh, need to be looked into, and this uh, should be the role of the parliament to ensure that there is proper oversight on how these budgetary allocations actually are put into, into actualization. Okay. We've seen, I've, I've been going through the, the reports by the, 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 the Auditor General and the, the Controller of Budget. And uh, you can see that there are so many gaps uh, in terms of uh, stalling projects. There are so many audit queries that move from one financial year to the next. And we also have just a number of gaps that are, if well addressed, then uh, we could see more change in terms of uh, the projects that are reaching out to the people up to the bottom line uh, to address the issues affecting the whole country. All right. Let me bring in Omulo on this. Omulo, what do you think of the budget? Uh, to be honest, uh, Trevor, um, I would say that uh, the budget did not meet uh, the expectation of the people. And um, it is ambitious because if you look at the 3.3 trillion budget, uh, which is 4.8% uh, uh, compared to 2.9 billion of the previous budget, there are three things you look at. One is uh, the cost of uh, you know, living that uh, uh, sky rocketing cost of living uh, that has overstretched uh, you know families uh, due to high cost of basic commodities and full prices Kenyans were expecting that uh, there would be a framework whereby uh, the uh, treasury would have um, you know reduce uh, you know taxes and also come up with measures that would also reduce expenditure so this was not done uh, because if you look at, uh, you know, the 10% uh, excess duty that was imposed, you know, the Treasury did not come out, uh, you know, specifically on where they're going to, you know, uh, to put those taxes, on what products. So it means that it's done uh, strategically and politically uh, to ensure because of political reason. Uh, secondly, um, you look at, um, uh, you know, the VAT on... Um, on uh, fuel and gas, you know, it is really affecting, uh, you know, uh, the uh, people uh, directly. Because uh, if you look at the cost of uh, commodities right now, people cannot afford uh, bread. People cannot afford uh, unga. Nowadays, if you have 1,000 shillings, uh, actually you cannot even budget with it. It's a very small amount. Uh, so uh, there are factors that you have to, uh, you know, interrogate in this process because if you look at uh, the VAT, especially on gas and uh, and, uh, and and fuel, uh, which is at eight uh, percent, uh, you know, from uh, you know initially in 2018, you remember uh, the VAT was at 16 percent, uh, to the extent that even the motorist and uh, lobby group had to protest, and the president had to reduce it to eight percent. And uh, you remember that this has been informed by the fact that uh, IMF, the in International Monetary Fund, had already given an advisory to ensure that the government increases and even doubles the VAT to ensure that uh, uh, when they give the uh, when they approve a loan of 2.3 billion, uh, billion U.S. dollars, and uh, this has informed the government to ensure that. Um, this amount will continue to increase. So cost of living will continue to increase. Okay. And secondly, uh, you know, Trevor, this 3.3 trillion, remember half, uh, 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 a third of it is going to pay, uh, you know, national debt. 
uh, which is uh, interest, is going to pay interest. You have not even talked about the principal amount. Uh, and remember, we are going to remain with a less amount. And when you talk about uh, the uh, uh, 2.1 trillion, uh, which is going to, uh, the government is going to look for in the um, uh, domestic revenue, uh, it is going to be difficult, despite the you know goodies that they have come up with. It is going to be difficult for the government to generate you know domestic revenue uh, due to this cost of living. Okay. And also, it is going to be you know Kenyans are going to feel the heat. Okay. Because you know when you are not clear on how you're going to you know generate this income, it's going to be very difficult. Okay. And then lastly, uh, if you look at, look at this budget. Um, they have uh, slashed uh, the budget for agriculture uh, from uh, which was uh, initially 75 uh, you know billion to 64 uh, you know agriculture is the backbone of a kenyan economy so it means that uh, if you are talking about you know reduced budget on agriculture it means that you're going to uh, you know kill uh, you know productivity in terms of uh, agriculture okay. and it's going to be difficult for farmers now to increase and even uh, you know proceed in introducing the best uh, you know uh, products that also will widen the base of uh, supply okay. and then lastly Trevor uh, they also talked about fertilizer subsidy. It's also very good to inform uh, our friends because I know it is politics. But uh, remember, the CS had uh, given um, advisory and introduced uh, fertilizer subsidy. Yeah. But on the ground, things are different okay. because people are still paying higher at right. a cost of 5,000 shillings. So they have not affected it okay. because uh, the prices of fertilizers. Uh, they're saying that you have to be a registered farmer for you to get those fertilizers. So, you know, we have to be very realistic, look at all these things against, you know, the debt that we are currently, you know, facing of okay. over 8 trillion. Amasi? Thank you so much, Trevor, for having me here this morning. Uh, <clears throat> in regards to this budget, there are a few things that, uh, to me, they don't really, really add up. One, I'd like to commend on the actions they've made that the CS has taken, because one, it looks like a recovery budget. And yes, we are from an economic pa and a COVID pandemic, and a lot of things have been happening. And when you look at the things that uh, he has focused on, they are focused on just to ensure that we fully recover as an economy, because that is very critical on our growth. And it will be true to state the fact that Kenyans have started feeling there's some cash flow within the economy and things are moving. So we hope that uh, it's going to, to go a long way. But my, my main concern is, uh, you know, this budget is a political budget. We are talking about it being the last budget for Huru Kenyatta. And yet, in a few months' time, we'll have a new command in chief, commander in chief. So who is going to implement this? Are we is the person coming in going to implement the ideas of Uru Kenyatta or is going to re revamp it? And again, it brings me to the question of the timings for these budgets. Could we have a way that the last year of someone's term, we have these elections, the, this budget done immediately after the elections? Because now you can see a scenario where we have presidential candidates. Their input, most of them, has not been captured in this particular document. And when they are sworn in as the president, they'll be required to implement this particular budget. And from where I sit, this budget does not talk a lot about job creation. And you see, as young people, we are suffering from lack of employment. And that is something that is very critical. Look at the 50% that um, the government is, is demanding from people who have issues, tax, tax, tax disputes with the government. Where are we going to get that 50%? If in the first place, as a Kenyan business person, I have, an, I have a tax dispute of 500 million. So I'll be required to pay 250 million before I go to court. That is a, that is a scenario that is uh, limiting people to get justice from where I sit. And I believe that is something that members of parliament are supposed to be very keen as they interrog interrogate this document. Another bit is the young people and the women occupy 70%. 
And yes, we are moving away from just converting young people to statistical uh, discussions. But again, when you look at the budget, if you look at the allocation that was given to the young people, to the youth, to create these employments, it's very minimal. It's like a drop in the ocean. And yet we have the military, we have the security organs, who have been allocated thousands of billions. And yet we are not in a war zone. Look at what is happening right now. Trevor, it's a shame as a country that in all of Africa, we are the one experiencing shortage with fuel. It's a shame. And as a government, I believe that uh, people, needs to be, people need to be serious yeah. who are put in this position so that at the, at the least level, let them on inch. Because you see, when there's no fuel at the, power, at the, at the fuel stations, yeah. who is suffering? That border border rider is in trouble. That matatu operator is in trouble. That taxi operator yeah. is in trouble. So what happens to the economy? We are stalling the economy through some actions that are not really, really good. And I wish the government will take action, stand action on these uh, guys who are really, really causing this fuel shortage in this country because it has really, really drained the economy in a bad way. Okay. Let's talk about this IBC issue, Maliba, and I see you have a re reaction to what your other panelists have said. IBC now, this one directly touches on you guys because you're the politicians. Are you confident that they will conduct a free and fair poll? They've been allocated 21.7 billion. Uh, of course, IBC had asked much more than that, yeah. uh, but I still feel that uh, there will be a window to uh, look at what they really needed. Uh, from where I sit, I do not think, you know, in Kenya we've really complicated elections. This is not rocket science. It's basic stuff. Uh, you realize that our election is one of the most expensive uh, yes. across the world, not just in Africa. So I think, uh, first of all, I think IBC is not an institution that was formed yesterday. Chebukati has told us enough times that uh, IBC is ready. And I'm actually quite confident that simply printing ballots, setting up systems and counting numbers, because I think for us a lot of times the problem has been counting, not preparing. And people will tell you, uh, a lot of times you've heard people say that uh, ballots will always be delivered to your village and sometimes the problem is that development is not delivered there. But for the delivery of ballot boxes, we do very well. I will actually just ask that you allow me to respond to a few yeah. things. They said, uh, first of all, I think uh, uh, my brother Omolo has actually not objectively looked at the, uh, at, uh, at the budget document because if he objectively, I know he did, but of course he did with sheds. Uh, but if he did, he would actually realize that a lot of the issues he raised actually have been taken care of. This budget tries to correct, you know, this is a recovery budget. We've just come from uh, a 2020 year, 2020-2021 year, where we actually went back to 0.3 because of uh, COVID. Uh, in development, we were at 0.3 percent, and that was quite far. Uh, in this year that we actually are finishing, we've actually come up to about 7 percent, the recovery, uh, at the recovery rate. So as much as things are difficult, we also have to look back and realize that we've just come from a hole. Uh, I also uh, uh, realize he raised issues with the finance bill and everything else. Those are actually coming up, and normally it's the consequence that follows up. This is how we'll actually tax this particular product. Uh, this is how we are raising revenue and stuff. All those complaints, he, he, st he spoke about oil. You know, Trevor, when you actually hear guys speak about oil being expensive and everything else, they realize what they forget that is in the region, we actually are very proactive because we realize and we know and appreciate that oil is actually at the core, it's the lifeblood of the economy, because it literally touches on oil. So what have we done as Kenya? The government has decided to subsidize. In the oil is actually ours, the price is actually uh, uh, quite down there. We have subsidized. And when we, you know, Kenya is a free market economy. So ordinarily, if you Trevor are going to import a newspaper or something else, let me use that as an example, you will sell it using market forces to ensure that you get what? You get profit. But in a state where the prices are regulated, in a situation where a product uh, is regulated, the prices are regulated, then you bring in, and where there is a deficit, then government comes through. That is one thing that we really need to actually appreciate. There's a reason why we try to regulate prices so that we stabilize the economy by stabilizing so that we do not leave an important stuff like the lifeblood of the economy like oil to be subject to the whims of uh, and markets can actually be very volatile especially to do with oil and if we opened it up 
it means that myself and Hamasi, for example, will uh, bring in oil, hold it, and ensure that we get uh, as much uh, profit as we want, of course, at the expense of the economy. Uh, the other bit of it I saw Hamas speaking about, uh, for example, moving the budgeting process to uh, after elections and such. You know, the budget is not a, is a tool, of course. It is not a tool for politicians. And in the Constitution 2020, the budgeting process is actually participatory. We say that we, the people, are taking unto ourselves this constitution and we will have a government that is participatory. So people, are, it's actually a process. And the budget itself, besides being a technical document, is also political. So when you hear somebody say that uh, this is a, a, a political document, it's about politics, politics is serious business. All of them are here courtesy of politics and they are trying to actually uh, trivialize politics. Politics is only second to religion. So people should take it serious because the first job that there is in the world is being a mother. The second job is being a preacher. The third one is being a politician because we are taking care of God's people. So it's serious <laughs> business and people should not actually take politics lightly and sometimes trivialize and stereotype it. Okay. Uh, and uh, just to, to mention uh, is that uh, this the supplementary window that when you come in as a new regime, uh, the constitution provides that, that you, you can actually remodel the, uh, the budget to actually suit needs. The budget is not rigid because demands and needs can actually change along the way. Okay. Yeah. Quick reaction on the, before I take a quick break you because know, you're going you to know, Trevor, talk about politics. You know, it's only, you know, Maliba, uh, you know, feels that he's speaking for uh, his, his partners or his friends. But no, uh, what he does not know <laughs> is that, you know, inflation rate uh, uh, is now at 5.6 from 0.5%. And you cannot say that things are good. Uh, people are suffering because uh, Maliba, I can tell you three liters of cooking oil Nowadays, it, people sell it at 1,000 shillings, you know, from uh, 400 and something, which we thought was very, very high. Right now, people cannot afford uh, kerosene, which is the basic need that they need. And uh, even gas, uh, you know, has uh, really increased in price. So if you want to really help the people, you target what is affecting them most, which is the basic commodity, which is a right under Article 43 of the uh, Constitution. But this right has been denied because the Kenyans can no longer afford basic needs. And uh, for you to reduce basic needs or uh, cost of living, you totally reduce or eliminate the VAT on gas and fuel. And I think what you can now advise your members of parliament is to <coughs> amend, uh, which of course I know the you know parliamentary budget committee had already initiated a process uh, to reduce the VAT from 8% to 4% under the petroleum products, uh, you know, taxes, levies, amendment bill 2021. So it is important that they reduce it. This, this is the most important thing for now. And if you look at this budget vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, the public debt, which is uh, because there's a deficit of 846 billion, uh, which where are we going to get that money? So it means that they are going to borrow. So if they borrow that money, it will already increase you know, the debt ceiling from uh, over 8 trillion to 9 trillion. And uh, you know, already the treasury is uh, beginning to introduce it to, to, to increase it to 12 trillion, which will not be good for Kenyans. Okay. So if you look at this budget in totality, you know, it means that each household is budgeted for 40,000 shillings per year. And if you're paying taxes and you, you don't have value for your money, it means you, you're not a proud Kenyan. So uh, let us not look at this budget for political reasons, but this budget is going to affect the incoming government. Okay. Like us as Kenya Kwanza, we look at this budget because our main and important uh, thing we are looking at is how best we can you know, elevate you know, people from, from poverty. How can we build economy? And you cannot build economy if you focus on infrastructure or bigger infrastructure without considering the common monoeji. Look at what you have done to border border people. You've actually made it mandatory. Is that in, that the, going, is that in the budget? Of course it is in the budget. You, you know, I and, think, and it's Trevor, going to affect yeah. them. Uh, just so to respond. They have, I'm to, just talking, they have to ensure their motorbikes yeah, and their so passengers as I'm well, the border border riders. On but behalf of a common monoeji. That is why I'm here okay. today. 
uh, very briefly then just, just a, a quick inter interjection you see when we have got such like uh, platforms it's so easy to allow polemics and poetry and literature to show up and political <laughs> barbs to actually show up and i actually can see him doing that and while he does a lot of polemics he actually sneaks in a lot of voodoo economics uh, you see you just don't talk about reduce 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 when you're looking at a budget it's actually a construct that is balanced and you have to look at it in context. In that when you say that you are reducing, already when I started, I said that uh, government has got, when you're talking about revenues, besides grants, there are normally three channels. The first channel is that government will, ta will get revenue or will tax you on income. The second one, the government will tax on or get revenue on consumption. And number three, we talk about government can tax wealth, which is not a very big uh, uh, stream locally. So everything he says, that's why I would actually want to challenge him. Can he give a model budget that Kenya Kwanzaa will do? And I would actually want to really be interested to see when did it change? And especially knowing that well that Kenya Kwanzaa has got a lot of government guys who are still government, they are doing something we call OPPO support. They oppose and then they support. As in, I am telling my friend, they are doing badly. So this OPPO support strategy is a very strange one. So, you know, honestly, we also need to be very, uh, a very ho honest people when we are going out there. That when we speak these things, we don't just throw out there. If you are, for example, telling the border border people to take up insurance, you know that that is a plus to the economy. You have to go to all hospitals and realize that nowadays all hospitals have got a ward specifically for injuries on that end. When we have got people who are losing livelihoods, who actually we are spending a lot much more money on them, that means that we are taking care of it. The one thing I am so sure of is that if my friend Omolo looked at the, uh, the, uh, the budget document, he didn't do it objectively. He already came in with uh, frames. And he, of course, it's uh, like he speaks about politics, that uh, let us not do this for politics. He's also doing the same and taking sides for politics. Okay. But I still insist that politics is serious business. Okay. Let us not trivialize. Let's talk about politics now when we come back. Let's take a quick break here. Keep your views coming at Trevor and Bidget, Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. When you come back, now we talk about politics. All right? See you in a bit. Thank you.